Hey there everybody, welcome back to more Final Fantasy 7. In the last episode, we entered our introduction section, and, well, not entered, we managed to get through the Mako, react um, the Mako Reactor intro sequence, which was essentially us destroying and in getting introduced to the Avalanche group. But now it is time, I'm not going to do a retake of that intro, I don't even know why I even bother, because every single time I always keep messing it up. But anyways... We're now going to be heading into the Avalanche hideout, and it seems to be some goons here, and a child, apparently. I, I guess, why was there a child there? This makes no sense, what I gotta say. Uh, no, what? There's a new update, that they were the terror's explosion up above, and at this time it was a Mako reactor. You know what this means? No. You see... I keep on top of these things, and if you ask me, if you knock out Midgar's power, then all the computers and signals are going to be knocked out too. Financially, there must must have been about a billion gil worth of damage, and it ain't all. A lot of innocent people got killed too. If the explosion had been in the middle of the night, that would have been one thing. At least the people could have gone gone in their sleep. Damn. Yeah, that does um ends up bringing up a good point. Like, the thing that they don't really tell us is, like, and I think they did probably tell us, is that every single Mako reactor we destroy, it kind of has the ability of also destroying a plate along with it. And the thing is that the plates are kind of above town. So, there's a plate above us here. So, at any point, if something were to happen to said plate, um, yeah, everybody here would be dead. But, hopefully that doesn't happen to us, because that'd be pretty bad. What the hell's wrong tonight? I thought that long blackout was strange. They say a Mako reactor was destroyed above. I was just sitting here drinking, watching the news by myself. And all of a sudden, I get kicked out of the fucking store. What's up with that? Well, I can't help you with that, dude. Well, jeez, I'm blitzed. I just love them homemade cocktails, but they sure do creep on me. Well, I can't help you with that. Bear, what you gotta say? Okay, go on ahead. Well, alright, thanks. Time for us to meet ourselves another character. Well... That's one of the characters that we need to meet, but say hello to a wonderful character that everyone loves and is their favorite waifu. This is Tifa. Tifa Lockhart. Not this time. If you say, yeah, the affinity for Tifa will go down. If you say, not this time, it will go up. So say, not this time, you didn't have a fight with Barrett. You were little, you used to get into fights a drop of a hat. Well, can you blame him? But yes, this is Tifa. She's a party member for ours and as Cloud's his childhood friend. But, but this girl here is Marlene. She's a little girl. Barrett's daughter. She's pretty cool. Ah, nothing like the first drink after a job. <laughs> oh, yeah, one too. Yeah, sure, why not? Ah, that's more like it. Even if you were a soldier, you're still a rookie here. So you better listen to whatever I tell you. Okay, well, see, when you say it like that, now you just sound like an asshole. But yeah. Marlene is... Marlene is Barrett's daughter, and everybody is uh, drinking all their ass of a job well done. By the way, I love this elevator over here. It's not even a glorified elevator. It's a, it's, it's, I mean, the arcade machine, it's not even an arcade machine, it's a friggin' elevator arcade machine, you just press a certain button and then BOOM! Automatic elevator. Let's go ahead and talk to Tifa, childhood friend, and see what she's gotta say. Give me something hard. Just a minute, I'll make one for you. Well, fine, whatever, even though, you can't animate what we were what she was making, but I like to think that she was making a drink called Seven Heaven, cause this bar here is actually called Seven Heaven. What's you all of a sudden? That job wasn't even tough. I guess not. You were in Soldier. Soldier is essentially the thing that Cloud is kind of like an army, and you know those guys that we fought were also soldiers. We'll be learning more about the soldiers later on. But for right now, Cloud is an ex-soldier. Because that's kind of what you saw with his name when we got into the first fight. But we need our money from Barrett because he's holding out on us. We freaking went out of our way to do this job for him and he hasn't paid us yet. Oops. Hey, look at the news. What a blast. I think it was all because of my bomb? But all I really did was just make it like the computer told me. Oh no. I must have made a miscalculation somewhere. 
President Shinra, today the number one reactor was bombed. The terrorist group Avalanche has claimed responsibility for bombing. It is expected that Avalanche will continue its reign of terror. But citizens of Midgar, there is no need to fear. I have immediately mobilized soldiers to protect our citizenry against the sense senseless violence. Thank you and good night. Well, alright. You think I'm a little too uptight? Nah, you're fine. Well, that's okay. Don't worry about me. I don't look like it, but I'm a coward at heart. Aw, oh, Wedge. You're my favorite. Are you Biggs? I don't even remember your names. <laughs> Was there anyone from Soldiers fighting us today? None. I'm positive. You sound pretty sure. Well, of course I'm sure. If we were fighting any soldier members, we wouldn't be standing here right now. Don't go thinking you bad just because you was a soldier. Alright, cool. <laughs> yeah, you're strong. Probably all them guys and soldiers are. But don't forget that you're skinny ass working for Avalanche now. Don't get no ideas about hanging on Shinra. Staying with Shinra, you ask me a question, I answer, that's all. Look into my face. I'm going upstairs. I want to talk about my money. Um, uh, hello. Tifa, let him go. Looks like he still misses the Shinra. Shut up. I don't care about neither Shinra nor Soldier. But don't get me wrong. I don't care about Avalanche or the planet for that matter. Embarrassed, pissed. Yeah, look at him rapidly punching that punching bag. Train things up with everyone for me. Ah, uh, I'll attempt it. Money? Oh my. Must have been for a lot of it. Well, what? What the, what the hell? It's a verbal agreement. Now let me figure this out. Oh, I don't. I think I skipped the dialogue. That's fine. You say you don't care, but you came to talk to me. Cloud, you just want friends. Isn't that right? I really don't care. You're terrible, real cold blooded. Huh. <sighs> That's our cloud. He's a riot. Hey, better than what he ends up being in, in um in Advent Children and also in Final F in Kingdom Hearts 2. Which is kind of something that people were kinda of don't want in the remake of Final Fantasy is to mess in Final Fantasy 7. Um they don't want them to mess up Clouds' personality. Because this is technically what Cloud's personality is like. He's not all moody and, you know, angst all that much. He does have his moments, but to be honest, he's a very chill dude. You forgot the promise, too. Promise? Well, damn. It was seven years ago. Oh, how convenient. Seven? Final Fantasy Seven? Haha! <laughs> gotta... Gotta keep that going, right? How are we doing this flashback? This is weird. <laughs> I still wanna know, like... Part of me wants me to do see the remake but a part of me doesn't want them to go ahead and I want them to stay faithful to the original and uh, one of the things that I can say is like there's a lot of weird animations that this game has that I don't think can translate well in the remake considering the remake is obviously going to be like Final Fantasy 15 but then again a lot of weird stuff can also happen in Final Fantasy 15 so maybe just maybe it probably won't be as bad as um as people might think it will become but I don't know I will have to see we haven't seen anything aside from snippets of them fighting a bunch of soldiers and all that other nonsense the great Sephiroth I remember I couldn't even pronounce that name as a kid. Then again, I never even paid attention to the story in Final Fantasy VII. Isn't it hard to join Soldier? Eh, kinda. I probably won't be able to come back to this town for a while. Well. Why are you laughing, Tifa? To make it, will you be in the newspapers? I mean... 
That depends. You want me to be in the newspapers when I'm dead? Or do you want me to be in the newspapers that I made it in? If you get really famous and I'm ever in a bind, you'll come save me, alright? What? If I'm ever in trouble, my hero will come and rescue me. I want to experience that at least once. Okay, well, um, what? That's a... What an odd dream. Fine, promise me. Fine. <laughs> All right, I promise. And that was the promise they made on that very night. And Cloud completely forgot it. You remember now, don't you? Nope. I'm not a hero and I'm not famous, so I can't keep our promise. But you got your childhood dream, didn't you? You joined Soldier. So come on, you gotta keep your promise. I will attempt to. No promises. Wait a sec, big time soldier. A promise is a promise. Here. Ooh, thank you. I receive a 1500 gil. Thank God. This is my pay? Don't make me laugh. What? Then you'll. You got the next mission lined up. I'll do it for 3000. What? It's okay, it's okay. We're really hurting for help, right? That money is for Marlene's schooling. Where are you gonna go to school here? Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, where in this area would you find a school? This place looks like a ragtag shanty town, to be fair. All right, but that's the end of that segment here. But now it is time for us to wake up and start to do our next job. That's yeah, all Final Fantasy VII is, guys. We're just doing jobs. We're <laughs> just doing odd jobs for Barrett. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> I'm going this time. Oh, all right, fine. What's Marlene gonna do? She's just gonna attend the bar. Oh, okay, I can't. All right, fine, whatever. Our target's the Sector 5 reactor. Head for the station first. I'll fill you in on the train. Okay. Yo, Cloud, for the next mission, I got something I want to ask you. Oh, yes, now it is time for the materia. Now, see, I'm not going to even bother to go, okay, I'll explain it. I'm just going to say you want to understand. Let me just explain and give you the rundown on it very quickly. Because, in all fairness, it's it's a, I don't like the dialogue. But anyways, Tifa says that the, um, the weapon shop man has something upstairs he wants to give us. So, we should go ahead and go talk to that guy before we leave. All right, so before we head outside, let's look at the materia slot. Now we got in ourselves a materia which was called Restore. Restore is essentially Cure. As you can see there, the AP ability is set to, is at, well, the AP points is at zero. And you notice that it says the next level is 2,500. Your goal is to essentially use the ability, fight monsters to be able to gain ability points. The more ability points you obtain, the more, um, the higher the skill will become, or the higher the material will grow, I should say. Now, you notice that you see three abilities, but you see more than three stars. Well, you kind of see four, well, five stars, I should say. If you max out the stars, essentially that skill will become maxed out. It will become mastered, essentially. The reason as to why you want to master materials is essentially you get um, uh, an, uh, an ability called Mastered Green Materia. There are five or four different colors. I know that there's, um, there's, okay, there's yellow, green, blue, red, and I think that's it. Yellow, green, blue, red, and, oh, and purple. Each, um, each one of them all have a different set of rules, like green is essentially your offensive and defensive magic, blue is essentially your, um, is the, uh, connection magic, I guess you can kind of say it like your, to augment your spells, say like, say like you see here with, uh, the material slot, right here where it needs to be connected, if you add a blue materia that's say like the all materia for example if you add the all materia and you add it with the lightning or ice or cure it will allow you to hit every every monster on the field problem is however you do have to level up the all materia to be able to go ahead and use it more than once another thing 
you notice that the equipment ends up having like strength negative and magic up and all that other sense materia kind of does sap away your energy when you end up um putting it inside your gauntlet or your weapons it's essentially it's also taking like your life force in a sense another thing i should mention there are three different materia slots there is one that does not have the little white dot that you see there is obviously one that with the dot and there's one that has more than um more than i think it has two dots i actually forgot but that kind of ends up giving the strength of how much the ability will grow as you can see here one dot means normal growth and if you have no dot at all it will say the growth is nothing if you have a dot that ends up having like two dots it will say double growth i think that there is an item that allows for triple growth but i'm not entirely sure i kind of forget most of the mechanic not most of the mechanics some stuff that i can get in this game mainly because you know i'm gonna i'm gonna forget stuff but uh, but trust me on this like i will end up like remembering it when we end up getting it i'm just explaining all this mechanics now because i'm gonna say this now once we're done with all the mechanics explaining the rest of the game is just gonna be me just going through the story now we can buy fire here and you know all that other stuff we are gonna buy fire and i am gonna buy myself another cure just in case because i kind of need to you kind of need to do a little bit of a feng shui here and there where you need to you know gather up some material go ahead and level it up always buy always try to buy some new material you will always sometimes find material some rare materials there are some materials that you can only get by certain means of side quests or you know mandatory drops and the like and trust me like you you want to do that like you really really want to do that also i think i just realized i just paid money to go ahead and rest at a shop which i don't think i really do this guy here will sell you iron bangles i want to buy three of those now the thing about um equipment here do not you are gonna have more party members do not i repeat do not buy more than three because three is all you need because what you can do is essentially when you switch out when you have like different party members just switch out the equipment take the equipment from your characters and then just put put it on them because you're gonna be wasting money by just buying six or seven um weapons for friggin um for your other party members it's wasteful it's a, it's a waste of money trust me you don't want to do that oh and there's a save point but if we talk to this guy right here and get the all material hey you got one right off that was materia next take this treasure box all right and what's in there it's an ether which obviously ends up okay well that's um that's great <laughs> Ether allows you to go ahead and restore your MP because, you know, magic ends up taking up MP. And tents can be used for save points, which allows you to go ahead and, um, obviously restore everything. When you leave Midgar, you get to the world map. You can save anywhere you like. Remember that. I'm glad that the game kind of spoils that for you. That should be all you need to know about the save point. I'll probably see you again somewhere down the road. Take care. I'm a treasure chest. Beginners, make sure to keep an eye out for me. The game loves to give us tutorial. The tutorial is very simple, though. though that's kind of one of the things. What's that guy teach you? That big buff dude. What's he have to say? This is the beginner's hall. You say you're a beginner, but your eyes say you're not. How do you know? Don't mess with me. I used to be in soldier. I'll tell you how much I know and free <laughs> for free. All right. So this basically tells you all the nonsense that I've already told you already. To be honest with you, you don't really need to go through the tutorial when you're doing like if somebody unless you're doing it blind and you have no idea what you're supposed to be doing, then you know go for it. But I already know what I'm supposed to be doing, so yeah. Also didn't need to rest, but the thing is though, when you do put materia slots on you, there's chances are that your health will drop as well. So, and 10 gil is not that bad. We can make that, we can make that, we can get 10 gil back from just one battle alone. But I think that's not the guy we're supposed to speak to. I think we're supposed to speak to this man right here. He'll forget about it. Oh, you. 
Got my friends on the second floor to teach you. Wait, that's it? Okay, forget it. I'm out of here. I thought that chief had said that there was a man who was supposed to give me stuff. Alright, but if you don't know where to actually go in terms of area um, entering, you can always just press like the, I think it's the select button that you have to press to be able to get the prompt for the little cursor mark. Sometimes I will be using that though, because every time I don't even know where to go. Aw, sounds like being a Pokemon master. He used to give us nothing but headaches when he was here, but now that he's gone, we kind of miss him. Strange, isn't it? Yeah, I know. That's kind of that kind of is a lot of parents when your child ends up moving and you guys are all by yourself. But hey, uh, some parents are kind of glad for that. Kind of ends up insinuating what that even means. Time's gone. You look a little disappointed. Um, what is that? What are you? Um, are you okay? You are you fine? Sheesh. All right, fine, move. Jesus. All right, let me actually um, put in the all materia. Uh, no, 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 no. There are actually, there's another thing I should mention. Some characters are good at certain abilities. Like, like Cloud is balanced. Barret is more physical. Tifa is sort of good with magic, but the other character that we'll be getting later on is a bit better with magic, with healing magic. I've had it. Me too. You know, this is the first time we've ever agreed on something. Yes. Well then, shall we? Yes. Excellent. Good job, guys. You guys are great. Dawn comes and things never change. You be careful not to get hurt. All right, now this segment here, you can, you can't fail, but I recommend not trying to fail it because if you fail it, you'll be pushed back, but not too far back. You can kind of, if you, if you don't successfully do it, what ends up happening is that you have to go a little bit further ahead to your destination, but that's really about it. You're not really missing much. You say something? I said, you say something? Now look at that. It got empty Illuvia all of a sudden. Olivia? I don't know what that word is. <laughs> Damn! It's empty because guys like you. Yeah. You've seen the news, right? Everland says there'd be more bombing. Only devoted employees like me would go to Midgar on a day like today. You work for Shinra? I won't give you give it to violence, Barrett. On. <laughs> so, what are we gonna do? Shit, the hell you so calm? You busting up my rhyme. I said busting up my rhyme. It clearly says busting up my rhythm, but you know what? I don't care. Anyways, the car is now moving, and it's time for us to do the little shenanigan hoedown, as per usual. Sadly, however, we are going to get into a little bit of a trouble because of the fact that, well, we do have to go through the security checkpoint. And sadly, however, uh, that's not going to fly this time. Good morning and welcome to Midgard Lions. Arrival time at Sector 4 station is 11.45. That means we got only three more minutes to the ID checkpoint. Alright, three minutes, we're jumping off this train. Got it? Sure. But I already did that already. What you got to say? You're the only ones that'll talk to me or come to my house. I'm impressed. Yeah, this is the, this is this dude's home. If you live in New York, you kind of already know the situation with that. Then again, I don't really think they say it's their home, so that's a bit different. All right. Up, oh, and we are in trouble. That's odd. The IV checkpoint was supposed to be further down. I think they might have changed it. Unidentified passengers confirmed. A search of all cars will be conducted. Repeat. Type A security alert. Unidentified passengers confirmed. Ah, uh, crap. What's going on? We're in trouble. I'll explain later. Hurry, get to the next car. Somebody fucked up. <laughs> Unidentified passengers located in car number one. Prepare for lockdown. All right, so here's the thing. We got 15 seconds, but you wanna go ahead and go quick and talk to this guy. Because if you talk to him, he has to give you a Phoenix down. Now run to the other car. 
If you don't talk to him, it, nothing will happen. It's just that he gives you a free Phoenix down if you actually talk to him during the situation that's happening. All right, so we got to pass through these NPCs. There's a section that's going to be happening right here with that guy right there in the red. Because I think it's that guy that actually jacks your money. He will jack your money. You will have to go after him to get your money back. So don't let it happen. Oh, no, it's actually... No, it's that guy. You'll steal your money. And then he'll give it back to you. And then he said you go. And the ladder is speed. I don't know how much money he actually takes from you, but... Eh, whatever. And that's it. I can't move. I don't know what I'm doing. I can't. Tifa, you are in the way. Thank you. Ah. Uh, hold on. Somebody's missing. No, wait. Yeah, somebody's missing. Where's, um... Where's Biggs? Or Jesse? Or Wedge? Or somebody? And... Uh, never mind. I also love how Barrett's doing that, too. It's so stupid. <laughs> uh, I hope they do that in the remake where they go ahead and just spin around in circles like a bunch of idiots. Because that's my favorite part of Final Fantasy VII. Oh, man. The, uh, the animations in this game is beautiful. All right. Now, you can find some enemies around here. And we are going to be... Ah, there's Biggs. There's that wedge. I don't know. But if you manage to get through the section without getting locked down in the other three cars, you essentially get to, you'll get further to your destination. But you can go back and you'll find a bunch of random soldiers that you can face. But we're not going to do that. We're actually going to make some progression. Those guys you can fight indefinitely too because they don't stop you. So, it's cool. Anyways, we're actually supposed to go through here. We're just gonna go down. I'm sorry. Like, it's, it's the most simplest thing to do. Ooh, potion. That has an ether. What am I on? There are enemies here, so don't think that we are alone. Because we're not. Trust me, you really think that this game would not go ahead and give us any enemies? There are no enemies that are not. There are no area with no enemies. I love this music that's playing. Sounds like something out of, um, some secret agent music. Anyways, let's see what new enemies we've got here. Ah, we got ourselves a weird fish enemy and rocket launcher. Blue Goo. That's a weird name. Anyways, Blue Goo will go ahead and cast a water ability that allows Barrett to take a snooze, which sucks. To be able to wake up you to be able to wake up your friends, you can do two things. You can either punch them yourself or you can go ahead and let the wait and let the enemy do it. Now Tifa is a brawler. She has the capabilities of using the limit break, which is a slot machine. If you get yeah, you will do you will deal critical hit. But the more times you use Tifa's ability, the more slots you'll end up obtaining as you know you're fighting with her. The problem is, however, is that the me the reasoning as to why getting all yeahs for Tifa is a little bit difficult because when you get a yeah for one of the slots, there is going to also be a miss slot. And oh my god, you are taking very long to die. Wow, you have a lot of health. I'm just going to use magic because magic usually is always the case of killing everything. Until you start getting like stronger weapons, as of right now, monsters in this in this half of the game are pretty freaking annoying. But yeah, um, the more yes you get, the less the the more misses you'll end up getting for each slot. So you want to be careful for that. Alrighty, I want to go up this ladder right here. Hey, look, it's Wedge or Biggs. No, it's Wedge. I, I think I think the fat one is Wedge. I totally. Forgot. We want to go into this vent over here because if we do, we manage to we can go ahead and get ourselves a very nifty item. We also find Jesse. Hey, Jesse. 
ID scan problem on the train was all my fault. I modified your ID card, and that's what did it. Did my best, but I failed. That's eh, fine. Get yourself a potion over here. What's down here? Is this such another area of nothingness? Oh, it's a safe point. It's progression, that's what it is. <laughs> Alright, I'm actually gonna end the episode here, though, because, um, yeah. Let's talk to Biggs real quick. We're gonna pull out now. We'll meet up back at the hideout. Cloud will count on you to blow up the reactor. Sure. But yeah. And the next episode of Final Fantasy VII, we'll be heading into Sector 5. And we'll be destroying this next reactor. And it's gonna be quite a doozy because, well, a lot of things is probably gonna be happening. But catch you guys next time. CCX, over and out. Laters.